Welcome traders to another Tickner Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 25th of April. Major event risk over the weekend is uh, focused around France's general elections. Second and deciding round of France's election will be held on Sunday. Projected results will be published soon after polls shut at 8pm Paris time. Unless the count is very tight, then we should have a good idea of who won shortly after that point. Recall that France does not allow early voting or voting by mail, and so a US-style vote counting fiasco is unlikely. Macron is the favourite. He took almost 29% of the vote in the first round about two weeks ago, which was almost five points above Le Pen's share. He beat Le Pen by about two to one margin in 2017. Current polls continue to give him an edge. The case for Macron is somewhat more about the case against Le Pen than the case for Macron. If Macron wins, then the market reaction may be fairly muted, given that what is at least partially priced uh, given the polls. It could be a very different story if Le Pen wins. At a time when Europe needs unity, Le Pen advocates insular policies such as holding a referendum on declaring French law sacrosanct over EU laws, which would essentially be like resurrecting the past desire for a Frexit. Le Pen's party is anti-immigrant at a time of major European immigrant crisis as Ukrainians flee their war-ravaged country. If she succeeds, this stance could fan renewed breakup premium over, bun over buns into the Monday morning markets and risk sentiment would likely take a hit. In terms of data uh, this week in the Eurozone, um, really focus uh, is on Thursday's e April economic confidence and consumer confidence. Soaring energy prices and commodity prices are a key concern for those prints. And then on Friday, we get April CPI year over year, 2.4%. Uh, energy inflation remains strong. We also get Q1 GDP for the Eurozone, looking for a 0.3% print. Russia-Ukraine conflict continues to impact at least in Q1 and probably Q2. From a technical perspective, the euro dollar is uh, heading for a test of the pivotal uh, range support, monthly range support, 106.40s, whilst we are co contained by offers at 109.30s. From here, I'll be watching for bullish momentum divergence to uh, play for a corrective move at least back into trend line resistance coming in there now around just below 109. If we can take that out then we can think about a test up into the descending trend channel resistance and monthly projected range resistance 111.75. Moving to the US now on Monday we get March Chicago Fed Activity Index Elevated cost pressures are a concern for manufacturers. We also get April Dallas Fed Index as well, looking for a, a 3.5 versus an 8.7 print last time out. On Tuesday, we get March Durable Goods, looking for a positive 1% print there. Supply chain issues still likely a headwind though. We also get February FHFA house prices, looking for a 1.5% print, strong demand with limited supply to drive house prices. Uh, growth before the Fed rate hikes likely to take effect. We also get April consumer confidence looking for a 108.4 versus a 107.2 last time. Inflation worries offsetting strength of the labor market. And we also get March new home sales looking for a positive 0.3% print there. Rising mortgage rates will be set to slow activity. On Wednesday, we get March wholesale inventories. Uh, stocks are being replenished as supplies allowed. We also get March pending home sales, looking for a negative 1% print there, higher rates looking to cool demand. On Thursday in the US, we get initial jobless claims, Q1 GDP looking for a positive 1% print there, Q1 hit by trade deficit and supply chain issues for inventory. And then we round out the week in the US with the Q1 employment index, looking for a 1.1% print there, tight labor markets to support ro robust wage growth. We also get March personal income looking for 0.4%. Purchasing power is becoming more of a concern. We get personal spending 0.6%. We also get March PCE deflator 0.9% looking for a print there. PCE inflation has reached 40 year highs and price pressures will only slowly start to abate throughout the remainder of the year. And we round out the week with April Chicago PMI, looking for a 61 print there, supply chain issues, still an ongoing concern. 
And April University of Michigan sentiment looking for a 65.7. Ex expectations have improved, but inflation a persistent risk. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index is up testing the trend channel and monthly projected range distance 10120s. Watch for uh, supply here, bearish reversal patterns to get a three-way corrective move back into the prior highs. And this is an internal ascending trend line support coming in 9940s. From there, I'm looking to engage on the long side, ultimately looking for a test of 102. Uh, 10220 area. Uh, from there, I will be watching for negative momentum divergence and bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, looking for a move back down into trend channel support 9760s. In the UK, um, in terms of data, it's very light next week. Thursday, we get April uh, nationwide house price index, uh, house prices, sorry. Uh, last time, 1.1% there. Momentum should cool over 2022, given rising mortgage rates in the UK. And that's the only real data of note uh, for sterling. From a technical perspective, we broke through, eventually taking out that 130 in a meaningful fashion. Now, whilst we hold trend channel resistance, 129.40s, 129.50, look for a Completion of the major equality objective versus the swing structure here and the swing high at 137.54, which should give us a test of 126.62. From there, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking to play a counter trend long position. Certainly think about a retest of that 130 area from below. In Japan, again, pretty light calendar. Uh, the only data of note is March industrial production on Thursday, looking for a positive 0.5% print. Obviously, supply chain issues ongoing and uh, causing struggle for uh, industrial production in Japan. From a technical perspective, as we hold trend channel support coming in at 127, we look for an extension up through the 130.30 and on to monthly projected range resistance which comes in at the 132 level. At this stage, only a loss of the trend channel support on a closing basis would suggest that we are likely to move back and take another look at 125 from above. Rounding it all out in Australia, uh, Wednesday we get uh, Q1 CPI looking for positive 1.7% print there versus 1.3% last time. Dwelling prices are surging as grants and uh, adding fuel to the auto sector as well and increasing rising pressures on food prices. Uh, should see Q1 CPI year over year print 4.6% on Wednesday. Then moving to Thursday, we get Q1 import and export in price indexes, 7 and 11% respectively, higher energy prices, uh, world prices and slightly lower Aussie uh, are going to shore those prints up and sharply higher commodity prices. Uh, we should see a strong export price print there, looking for 11%. And round out the week with March private sector credits on Friday, 0.6%, robust momentum in business. Housing potentially cresting though, uh, should see some upward pressure on input prices for the PPI print of 1.3%. From a technical perspective, the Aussie lost that trend channel support we were watching so uh, now we look for an extension down into test the equality objective versus the swing high at 7450s which should give us a 7147 test from there we'll see a buyer step back in watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side at least looking for move back up into test uh, stops and offers above the 73 handle at this stage any close through the 71 handle which would likely see us retesting cycle lows back to the 6970s. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing 25th of April. As always traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.